Perceive, process, perform. Do you need inspiration for your practice? Or do you simply need to practice inspiration? With this series, we aim to do both. Give us 15 minutes and we'll give you practice inspiration. Hello, uh, I'm Steve Wagner, a prosthodontist from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I think it's time for us to discuss digital dentures. Digital dentures. Are they hip, something you should be using in your practice, or are they hype, digital just because they're digital? That's gonna be the story we're gonna pursue. Let me uh, give you some terms. CAD CAM, computer-aided design, ca uh, the CAM being computer-aided manufacturing. That means you design something on the screen that's computer-aided design, and you manufacture it uh, that, on, on either a mill or, a, or you print it, that's computer-aided manufacturing. A term that you might not know is CAE, computer-aided engineering. And this is gonna play an increasingly important part in the construction of digital dentures. CAE is the field of engineering where the accumulation and analysis of data is applied to the design process and is used to create your, your digital dental prosthesis. In other words, this is where the accumulated knowledge going back 150 years is integrated into the computer process and that information is then used to develop your prosthesis. I mean, ideas that Martone had, the idea of placing your central incisors 12 mil millimeters in front of the incisor papilla, or Schiffman, the idea that the canines uh, were in line with a line perpendicular to the, uh, through the incisive papilla in the maxilla. Those things can be incorporated, as well as Vig's work, the idea of where that incisal edge should be in relationship to the lip, old, young, where should that be placed? That's computer-aided engineering. That's cu coming, and that will be integrated into the process. Another term that we need to talk about is digital workflow. When you talk about a digital denture, you're really talking about two things. One is the final digital product itself. That's a digital denture. But the other part is how can digital techniques be used in the clinical side of the prosthesis? That's digital workflow. Um, several companies are working on the digital workflow, the idea of cutting down chair time. Uh, Glidewell uh, produces a interim denture, a try-in denture, used partially using uh, digital techniques that, that base is printed. Um, Denka actually prints an entire denture and that can be used for a, basically a digital try-in. You can put it in the mouth, patients can comment on it, and you can modify it. Uh, Avident has a device that's similar. Each tooth is, uh, is uh, digitally printed, incorporated into a special wax that you can warm and move teeth. Again, it's using digital techniques to make your clinical work easier. So let's go back to the beginning. Dentures really started around 1950 when, tar uh, excuse me, 1850, when uh, Charles Stent developed uh, impression making pla uh, a compound. Um, his name Stent is actually connected directly to the stents we all talk about in medicine, but it went back to dentistry. Um, 1870s, vulcanite was developed. In 1900, the uh, Green Brothers wrote their uh, book on plate work. Um, 1930s, methyl methacrylate uh, was developed. And in the 50s, Boucher and Devan really developed all the techniques that we use today. Essentially, we're doing dentures in, 19, in 2015, 2017, like they were doing in 1950. Uh, this would be a typical denture, something we would be proud of. But there are problems. There are disadvantages with, um, with uh, traditional dentures. One is it takes five appointments to make a denture. That's what Boucher taught us. But today, it costs about five to seven dollars a minute to run your practice. That wasn't true in Boucher's time. And many people are finding that they just can't afford to make a denture. They, there's a ceiling to the price that you can get in your community, and it just takes too much time to make a denture. You actually would lose money if you did a traditional technique. They don't fit as well as they, they, they would like. There's shrinkage in the material, and there's really an inability to, to duplicate the denture. That's a big problem. If they lose a denture, you've got to start at point zero. 
Well, um, the biggest thing for me is that traditional dentures, the materials themselves cannot withstand the stresses of implant-based dentures. And that's a big problem. If you put a denture over an implant, there's a good chance it's gonna break. So 2010 uh, was really the start of the modern era for digital dentures. That was only uh, eight years ago. A fellow named Charlie Goodacre, a great man, a great dentist, uh, Dean from Loma Linda, actually got the idea that he could put together a digital denture and he actually made it out of a piece of a clear plastic he found in the garage. He put it on a mill, uh, set teeth in it, put it in the patient's mouth, and uh, ultimately constructed a, the, the first modern digital denture um, using traditional materials and traditional teeth. Uh, it looked pretty good. It was a pretty good result, and it was, showed that there was a possibility of being able to use digital techniques for, for this work. Um, a fellow named Ty Kim out of USC developed a technique uh, that turned into the Dentka product. Uh, this is little device in green is something that he used to take measurements of the mouth, and that was di digitized. Um, Harold Jarvis, or excuse me, Ron Jarvis from New York made a similar device, again trying to use find a, a way of, of taking traditional techniques and digitizing them, but that was just 2010. Now, um, there's about five companies in the world producing a digital denture. Um, I'm gonna look at three of them. Uh, the Ivoclar digital denture coming from Ivoclar in Europe, Avident, which is a, a, a startup, an entrepreneur startup in the United States, and then the Dentka denture that came from Ty Kim at USC. The Ivoclar denture, all, all three of them have different approaches, but they all end up with a dig, digital product. Um, Ivoclar would take a puck, that's what they call the disc of uh, material for a uh, printer. They would mill the teeth in tooth-colored resin, a block of teeth. They'd mill the base out of gingival-covered resin, and then they would glue them together. So they'd take a piece, mill all the teeth, you can see they're all put together, put mill the base, it has the intaglio surface that touches the gingiva, and sockets to place the teeth in, and then they would join them together to make the final product. Um, this is, a, is an example of what they have there. The bases fit intimately, uh, the material is, is constructed under pressure so it's more dense. Um, this is something you can get today. Avident has a similar approach. You can see the puck there. Instead of milling teeth, they mill sockets for existing teeth, let's say an Ivoclar tooth or a Densply Serona tooth. And then they um, actually loot those teeth into those sockets. They also have a denture that is actually milled out of one piece of resin. It's called a monolithic denture. And if you look at it in cross-section, you realize the tooth isn't a, is a, isn't a traditional tooth. It's actually milled out of the same resin they made, making that impossible for that tooth to pop out under implant pressure. And even more, that tooth now gives strength to the denture, which is real important because, um, again, you know, the problem was dentures are breaking. This is some, a technique that addresses that problem. And then Denka. Um, Denka, actually, this is very interesting. They're just in the last couple months started entirely printing their denture. All the other dentures are milled, Ivoclar and Avident. Denka is actually printing their denture on a, a printer that you could have in your office or in the lab. They print the teeth in one color, they print the uh, base in another, and then they loot those together. They are the only company at this moment that has FDA approval for, um, for a printed denture. It's a lovely product. It's something that can be produced and it, 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 well, it's strong um, and it, it does allow for a, uh, an accelerated workflow. Okay, so the question is, is it hip or is it hype? In my mind, it's hip. I think especially the dentures that are stronger, if you're making implant-based dentures, it's a must, it just can be done. And the idea that you could save two appointments to construct your prosthesis, that's significant. 
Um, you could turn that time towards other services that you could provide. Um, you're, you're giving less chair time for the patient. And overall, I think it's really a 21st century denture. So listen, I want to thank you um, for allowing me to do this practice inspiration. It means a lot to me. I hope we can talk soon. Um, I, as you can maybe get a feeling for, I'm just passionate about this and I'm anxious to help you in any way I can. Thank you.